The rule of thirds is a composition guideline that can be applied to various forms of art, including collaging. It involves dividing the composition into a grid of nine equal parts using two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. Here's how you can apply the rule of thirds in collaging. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I have recently given this journal a makeover. So if you want to see that, as well as how I made this dangle, please see the video is linked below. So I'm choosing this page here for my collage today. And I'm starting off with choosing a focal point. And I'm going to use this Chinese lady right here. She's on my cabinet card set one on page three, and I will link these for you down below. But the principle I'm showing you today applies to any focal points you may choose to use. So first I'm going to cut her out. And by the way, I printed this on deli paper. Obviously you can also just print on regular copy paper or use a magazine cutout. There's lots of options to pick focal points. So here we have our main focal point for this collage. And now we need to think of our grid overlay. Either picture an overlay in your mind or actually make a physical overlay like I did here on vellum. So I cut a piece of vellum in the same size as my page. Then I measured the width and the height, divided them each into three and made the lines. So now I have nine equal rectangles, which will help me with my composition. So now let's think about the placement of our focal point. So the intersecting points of our grid lines, so these four here, are considered strong focal points in the composition. So I'm going to place my eye-catching elements near these intersecting points to create visual interest and draw the viewer's attention. So these focal points can be significant images like we have here. It could just be a vibrant color or texture that I want to highlight in my composition. So keeping this grip in mind, I might place her somewhere up here, which is right at this intersecting point. This already gives me a lot more interest and dynamic than placing her in the middle like that. And since she appears to be floating like this, let's help her out a little bit and give her some butterfly wings. These are from a digital that I have as well. So if you are in need of butterfly wings, you can check that one out below too. So I don't need the antennas in this case. Okay, so now she's flying. And of course, we want to add some more elements to this collage. So I need to consider the balance and the flow of this page. So I'm going to distribute my elements across the grid to create a balance. So first of all, I want to add two more smaller butterflies because there's too much empty space up here. I am planning on adding something here on the bottom as well, but for in the air, I need something else here and I always like uneven numbers and especially threes. So I picked two more butterflies in the same color to stay cohesive. So now when I think about where to place these, I could place these on these grid lines, but not where they're intersecting because even though they're smaller, I don't want them to compete with our main image. So for example, I could put one up here right along this line turn it a little bit that gives it more dynamic and then we have this smaller one i could place it here on this grid line turning the other way again to create some movement and dynamic and so this already is very harmonious right now and then i have a lot of space here on the bottom so i'm going to be adding some buildings down here and i have these from this book Extraordinary Things to Cut Out and Collage by Maria Rivens. 
it's a really fun collaging book and I will link this for you below as well. There are many, many other collaging books available. This is the one that I have. So I cut out these buildings. They don't really go together, but we will make it work. <laughs> Another good way for aligning elements is to align them along the grid lines. So for example, if I put this down here, it will be along my lowest grid line and work for my composition. Now I still have a lot of space here, so I'm going to add this one in the back. And I know this makes no sense, but I have an explanation for that. <laughs> So we could add these two. And the story behind this collage is this lady and her family have immigrated to America. She is a music teacher, but she really misses her home. So in her dreams, she flies away to her homeland. And since this is a dream, why not add some more fun elements? So I have these flowers that I cut out of a floral vintage book that I found at my Goodwill. So maybe we could just add those here. Now, if I want these to be focal points, I will place them here again where these two meet. And then we have the second one. It doesn't have to be exactly on the intersection. It can also just be around that area because for example, I don't want these to line up. That's kind of boring. So let's move this one further down. That again helps the composition. Now, obviously in her dream, this totally makes sense. <laughs> Then of course, we also need to look at our negative space because we need to create some room for breathing and for balance. And it can also help enhance the overall composition and give importance to the elements placed on the grids. So I'm happy with this composition. Obviously we still need a background. So I'm going to remove this whole, whoops, this whole sheet. I can leave the elements on my sheet so that I know where they go. So I will carefully move this to the side. And now I can think about what to do with my background. So given that she's in a dreamland thinking of her home, it makes sense to use some more of this beautiful Chinese paper. I got this in a Chinese furniture store about 10 years ago. I really don't have a lot of it left, but I am going to sacrifice this one for this page. And I think I'm just going to tear some strips. And since she's a music teacher, I can alternate those strips with some strips of my music sheet here and create a background that way. I'm going to use my Liquitex matte gel to adhere these strips of paper. You can use glue stick or whatever your favorite glue is. What I like about this one is that it's super easy to apply. It doesn't dry out in the container and it gives me a matte finish. I don't have to worry about glue squishing out and then having some glossy spots. So I'm just going to I guess alternate these and I'm not worried about covering the whole page. So in her dreams, these two worlds are mixing the one where she's in the US as a music teacher and the one where she's at home. I don't have to worry about this bottom because that will be covered up with the houses. Mm, I'm not happy about this blank space here. Once this is dry, I'm going to add a little bit of some thin white gesso on top because I want to lighten it up a little bit, but I still want this back on, of course, to shine through. So if I see this is too opaque, I'm going to add a little bit of water. Of course, when creating compositions like this, there's always flexibility. So the rule of thirds is very useful as a guideline, but it's also important to remember that your artistic expression allows for experimentation and for flexibility. So feel free to deviate from the grid when necessary to achieve your desired aesthetic or whatever message you're trying to convey. 
And to get a nice cohesive color balance, I want to add some more of this purplish lilac color in my background. And I'm going to do that by adding some watercolor. These are by Prima Marketing. They are called Pastel Dreams. And as you can see here, we have this lilac rain color, which is the one I'm going to use. So that's this one. If you're considering getting this beautiful palette, keep in mind that only these six in these six colors are in here. The rest here I've added from another palette. So I want to do this by dripping the color. So I will first apply some water onto my page. I have already dried the white gesso. And then I will take some of this beautiful pastel lilac. And it's good to have like a kitchen towel or something on the bottom here because we will have some drips. And then I'm going to add some color onto my page. Should we also add some gold? That's a very rhetoric question in my case, isn't it? <laughs> Let me first dry this. Okay, now I'll take some of this gold. I'll put it on top here. And since I don't want to wet the whole page again because I like the lilac as it is, I'll take my mini mister. You could take a regular spray bottle and just move that. So, and you just keep adding as much as you want and until you think it's enough. Okay, I'm good with this, so I'm going to dry this again. So now we have this beautiful, shimmery, dreamy background and we can just transfer our composition to our page. Have another look before we glue things down. We can always double check with our grid to make sure our placement is where we want it to be. This one could move over a little bit to touch that grid line. This one is fine, although we could move it up a little bit. She could go down just a little bit. Flowers here can move also. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. So now I can glue all these elements down and this time I'm going to use my art glitter glue to glue these elements. And you can take a photo with your phone if you're not sure that you're going to remember where to put the elements. But again, you can double check using your grid. For this bottom part, I'm going to use the top down gluing method because otherwise I'm going to be moving everything. So I'll first glue the one that's on top down onto the others and that way things will not keep moving. So first the one half, then the other half. That definitely makes for a more stress-free collage experience, in my opinion. So now I just need to glue all these other parts. And then we can turn around the whole thing and glue it from the back. And then we cut away all the excess. And then I also want to add a sentiment. I have this one, I believe this is Tim Holtz Chatterbox. And I have one sticker here that says, in my dreams, how perfect is that? I'm going to ink this up with Vintage Photo. And I'll add some glue because I don't trust these stickers. Okay, where do we put this? Since it is a composition element, we could again use our grid. So here it would be on this line. 
but I don't like it there. So this is the part where we're going to be flexible and move it to a place that is more pleasing. How about right there? So by applying the rule of thirds in collaging, you can create a visually pleasing and balanced composition that engages the viewer and enhances the impact of your collage. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.